One state of matter that we encounter all the time and we spend a fair bit of time studying is gases. So let's take a few minutes to look at uh, some details about gases. First of all, why is it good to work with gases? Well, one of the biggest advantages is gases behave really well uh, because they are, under a variety of conditions, non-interacting particles. So that means we don't have to worry about the particles interacting with each other. All we have to worry about is how they interact with their environment. Uh, it's also nice because kinetic molecular theory gives us a really nice way to understand those non-interacting particles. And finally, a little bit more practical consideration, a number of the properties of gases are, are reasonably easy to measure. Um, so they're not that hard to study. Now, of course, if there are advantages, there are disadvantages. Um, practically speaking, gases can be difficult to work with. You can't just have a beaker full of gas. You need um, equipment that can hold gases. Their volume is highly variable. Uh, that's both a, a good thing and a bad thing. Um, it makes them easier to manipulate, but it also makes them harder to work with sometimes. And finally, when kinetic molecular theory doesn't work, um, gases can, can be a little harder to, to manage. So let's think about the ideal gas law. When a gas obeys all parts of kinetic molecular theory, we call it an ideal gas, or we say that it's behaving ideally. So just a quick review on kinetic molecular theory. Kinetic molecular theory is stated in a number of different ways. Basically, gases are composed of non-interacting particles with negligible size. Those particles move randomly and collide elastically. And the kinetic energy is distributed and propor proportional to the absolute temperature. When we're talking about gases, volume, amount, temperature, and pressure are related to one another. Again, because of that non-interacting particles of negligible size. And as I said, volume is, is highly variable. So let's take a look at some of the relationships between volume and these other properties. Let's start with amount. This one almost seems too obvious to, to state. When the amount of gas increases, the volume increases. So when we say amount, what what I mean here is the number of gas particles or the moles of gas particles. So volume is proportional to number of moles of particles. When the temperature of gas increases, the volume increases. So volume is proportional to temperature. As one goes up, the other goes up. Or I guess inversely, as the temperature goes up, the volume goes up. And finally, when we think about pressure, when we increase the pressure of a gas, the volume decreases. So push on it harder and it gets smaller. That means that volume and pressure are inversely related. So volume is proportional to one over pressure. If we combine those all, we come up with the ideal gas law. So volume is proportional to number of moles, temperature, and inversely proportional to pressure, which means I can bring that over here and end up with PV. So the pressure times the volume is proportional to the number of moles times the temperature. Proportionalities are great concepts, but they're easier to work with as equalities. So if we add a proportionality constant, call it R, then PV is equal to R NT, or as it's more commonly written, PV equals NRT. Be careful with R. This is a place where a lot of people run into trouble when they're trying to work through problems and, and do things. R has a lot of different values. And most of them are the same, conceptually the same R. They're just different values because they have different units. So when you need R for a gas law or anything else, but if you need it for a gas law, make sure that you get a value of R that corresponds with the units you want to use. Most of the time for gases, we end up using the value of R uh, that has units of liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin. So 0 0.08206 liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin. If you think about the ideal gas law, liters is a volume unit. 
atmospheres is a pressure unit, moles is an amount unit, and Kelvin is a temperature unit. So this one's usually pretty useful. If we've got multiple conditions, if we've got two sets of conditions, we can actually use a little bit different form of the ideal gas law. So if I think about my two sets of conditions, P1, V1 equals R times N1, T1, that's just the ideal gas law. If I have a second set of conditions, well, I've got the same ideal gas law where all of these properties are changing. R is a constant, so I can solve for R and end up setting those equal and come up with the comparative form of the ideal gas law. P1 V1 over N1 T1 is equal to P2 V2 over N2 T2. And this ends up being a pretty useful version of it in a lot of different situations. Let's take a look at a specific problem. A 2.387 mole gas sample initially at 1.978 atmospheres and 14.27 degrees C is transferred into a new vessel with a volume of 41.82 liters at 21.59 degrees C. Assuming all of the gas sample is transferred into the empty new vessel, what is the pressure in the new vessel? Anytime we're doing a problem, we need to do a little bit of information picking. So let's start thinking about all these different numbers and things that are swimming around in here. I've got one set of conditions, 2.387 moles, 1.978 atmospheres, and 14.27 degrees C, where I'm starting. I don't know the, the volume of this right now, but we'll get to that in a minute. I'm changing those conditions to get to 21.59 degrees C and 41.82 liters. I don't know the pressure over here. That's what the question is asking for. And you see that I use the same number of moles. That's because in the problem, we're assuming all of the gas sample is transferred. So all of the moles that are here are going to be transferred over here. And another just little point here, we are specifically saying that this is an empty new vessel. So there is nothing in this vessel before we add this gas. So the total number of moles of gas that are in here are just the total number of moles that were in the other one. Let's start by looking at the volume of our initial container. That one, we've got enough information to plug into the regular ideal gas law. So PV equals NRT, PV equals RNT. Uh, I know the pressure of that. I don't know the volume. I'm using my 0 0.08206 liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin version of R. I know how many moles I've got, and I know the temperature that I'm working with. Now you see I've already converted this over to a Kelvin temperature. This unit for our constant R should help us remember that these always have to be in Kelvins. Solving that for V, I get 28.4626 liters as my first volume. And, you know, just my note here, this is way too many sig figs. At this point, I don't care. I'm carrying extra sig figs so that I don't round off too much. When we get to the end of the problem, we'll round it off to an appropriate number of sig figs. Let's gather our information. We already kind of did this on the first slide, but let's throw it in a table. So my condition number one, I've got 1.978 atmospheres as a pressure. I've got 28.4626 liters for a volume. I've got 2.387 moles and I've got 287.42, excuse me, Kelvins for temperature. Pulling the other information out of the problem, condition number two, I don't know the pressure. That's what I'm looking for. 41.82 liters for a volume, 2.378, my moles didn't change, and my Kelvin temperature, 314.97. Don't be afraid to use a table. Don't be afraid to be explicit in organizing your data. Oftentimes, that's where people run into challenges with these kind of problems. Now that I've got that all collected and organized, I can plug all the values I know into the, uh, into the comparative form of the ideal gas law. So P1 V1 over N1 T1 is equal to P2 V2 over N2 T2. All of my ones are condition number one. So I've got those plugged in. All of my twos are condition number two. The one I don't know is pressure. So P2 is left there. Solving that, I get P2 is equal to 1.47526 atmospheres. And 
remember now we've got to uh, round this to an appropriate number of sig figs. I've got four sig figs, four sig figs, more than four, more than four, 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 more than four. So I better round to four sig figs since these are all uh, multiplication and division events. So 1.475 atmospheres. Now I included everything in here, but any condition that doesn't change, we can actually ignore. We can actually eliminate because if I've got 2.387 moles on the left and I've got 2.387 moles on the right, those will mathematically cancel each other out. So starting with the full comparative ideal gas law, I can plug in whatever values I know, and if there's something that doesn't change, I can just cross it out and simplify the gas law I'm working with. In fact, the one you see here with moles uh, canceled out is sometimes called the combined gas law because uh, moles often don't change, but the other three conditions are a little bit easier to change. Some tips for using the ideal gas law. First of all, if you only have one set of conditions, use the normal one set of conditions, PV equals NRT ideal gas law. If conditions are changing, you're probably going to want to use some form or some version of the comparative form of the ideal gas law. Temperature is always in Kelvin, right? Go all the way back to kinetic molecular theory. We said the kinetic energy is proportional to the absolute temperature. So Kelvin is an absolute temperature scale, an absolute temperature unit. Watch your R. Make sure you use the version of R with the units that you need for the problem. And let those units help you when you're setting up the problem. And finally, a super secret chemist trick. Uh, if you're using the comparative form of the ideal gas law, you can actually use whatever units you want for P, V, and N as long as they are the same unit, because that's another one of those things that mathematically is just going to cancel itself out. The warning here is temperature is always in Kelvin. So that one you have to always use Kelvin, but pressure can be in atmospheres or bar or PSI, um, and similarly with the others. These can be in just about any unit as long as that unit is the same on both sides. These take some practice, and with that practice, they start to make a little bit more sense and are easier to pick out. So good luck and keep on practicing. Mm -hmm.